I just have to say, woo-hoo, mentor library. Holy cow, this is the biggest turnout we have ever had at a library. This is amazing. So thank you all for coming out. Weather was great. And as Meg said, uh, Mary is one of our wellness consultants at um, our Heinen's of Willoughby. Just so you know, all Heinen's grocery stores have a dedicated wellness consultant or two in the department closest to um, our produce department. And they are there to help you make better choices, supplement questions. They're, I mean, they do tours, they do all kinds of things. And, and they're such little gems in our stores. Most people don't even know that they exist, but they're a free resource and they're there, really they're employed to help you and, it, and they're passionate and they're trained. So utilize them. Mary, again, is at your Willoughby Heinen's along with Courtney. So I've got to tell you, this is not even work for me. This is such a passion, not only this topic, but just health and nutrition in general. And I got to tell you why. I didn't always start out, I've, I wasn't always a healthy eater. And I got to tell you, for those of you who like ice cream, how many of you have tried Mitchell's ice cream? Oh. I'm not afraid to do things like that once in a while, right? I mean, it's part of life, it's, but we're, we're human beings, we're perfectly imperfect, so I'm not gonna stand here and tell you, eat your fruits and vegetables and don't ever eat sugar again because you know what, I just would rather die, right? It, that you gotta have a little bit of fun in life. And, but there was a time in my life that I was addicted to sugar. I mean, addicted with a capital A. There were times, I can recall, when I, my husband, my now husband, and I were dating back in 1997, 98, we would watch a movie and I would literally eat a bag of jelly beans, one after the other, after the other, after the other, until it was gone. And it would always just floor me, like how, how can I eat this whole thing and, and not even feel full off of it, right? I mean, it was almost like it was, it was a drug and, and we kind of know that sugar is a drug. And so my hand would get to the bottom, but this was in the 90s. So those of you who remember in the 1980s and 90s, that was the era of fat-free everything. Snackwell's cookies, Entenmann's had fat-free cakes, yogurts, cheese, by the way, when your cat will not eat fat-free cheese, there's a problem, right? Because <laughs> cats love cheese and dairy, but I remember giving my little cat a little piece of fat-free Kraft cheese, and that cat looked at me, little Molly, like, you've got to be kidding me, right? Fat-free butter, do you remember that? So, like, that time, the fat was demonized, and sugar was like, there was no conversation about sugar at all. So what happened was fat was demonized and everybody was, they were all eating these fat, myself included, everything was fat free. Jelly beans were fat free, so they were fine, right? In my mind, had no problem with it, fat free ice cream. But when they take the fat out, they put the sugar in, right? So fast forward to mid, well, it was 2014, 2013, 2014, had my blood drawn. Now, now my, eating habits then had evolved after that. But in 2014, 2015, had my blood drawn, was eating pretty decently, and I was told that I was pre-diabetic. And I said, what in, you know, I'm not gonna say it because I'm, I'm on recording here, but I said, there's no way, there's no way. Well, I found out that maybe I wasn't eating the sugar like I used to, but I was eating a lot of, um, healthy carbohydrates, sprouted chips. I don't care if they're sprouted or not. When you eat half the bag, there's a problem there, right? So my point in, in this slide is to say, I ate sugar and I was addicted to sugar, but I totally banned fat from my diet because that's what all the experts said, that Susan Powder, right? Remember her? Stop the insanity, fat will make you fat. That was the message then, but we know so much more now that it's, it's 
the recommendations that I'm going to offer you today, I'm going to give you some kind of background and then I'm going to give you some things, actionable steps you can take to turn it around. And again, never to say you're never going to have a drop of sugar again in your life because it, it, let's be reasonable. Uh, but just to give you some things that you can work towards to really improve your eating habits and really take those sugar cravings away if you do happen to, to fall in that camp of you know, the, the sugar addict, um, or maybe not, but you know, we'll see. So here's what we know. This is some recent stat statistics that per person, per year, we eat about 150 pounds of sugar. Now I know what you're thinking. I don't put sugar on things, Melanie, so that is not me. No, it's not adding sugar to things, it's eating things that we don't even realize, like, you know, pizza sauce, marinara sauce, um, it's in, obviously, cereal, bread, things that we don't think have sugar in them actually have added, you don't, they don't taste sweet, and that's the thing. They taste just like marinara sauce or pizza sauce, but when you really look at that nutrition label, you realize, oh my gosh, so they're adding sugar to this, okay? So it's not just sugar that you're adding to food, it's sugar that's hidden, but also, and this is a really important point, there's about 150 pounds per person per year of white flour products, bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, processed foods. And why that is important is our body digests flour, white flour products into sugar. So it acts the same in your body. My mother, and she doesn't even know how to log on to YouTube, so she'll never see this. She's a uh, diabetic, and every night she eats a snack, which, okay, fine but she eats pretzels. I said, mom, the first ingredient is wheat flour. That's white flour. You might as well be eating pixie sticks. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, mom, eat some nuts. So she started doing that, blood sugars came down in the morning. So it's, my point with this is that it doesn't even need to be sugar. It could just be white flour products that you're eating, like the crackers and the, you know, the cereals and the graham crackers and all of that stuff. I don't care what the front of the label says, because oftentimes it's tricky, isn't it? It'll say made with whole grains and it's sprouted, and it, but it will still break down into sugar and elevate your blood sugar levels and cause those cravings for sugary type products or processed foods. So. We know sugar's a drug. I mean, it is, it's an addictive substance. So they've shown that it actually lights up, and you've probably heard this before, the same pathway. So like in imaging brain, brain scans, it lights up the same reward pathways of the brain, just like heroin, morphine, and um, opium. So when they've done scans, they've seen person eats sugar, lights up that area in the brain, and it says, give me more, give me more. So you grab more. This is why I couldn't just eat one or two jelly beans, right? I, I wanted more. Pathway lit up, grabbed more. All the while, I was avoiding fat, which is the very thing that can help blunt the, the spike in blood sugar and cravings, okay? And we'll get to that. But we've also, we also know that sugar and processed foods, I'm not just talking about white sugar products, processed foods, have been shown to be about eight times more addictive than cocaine, like it's a drug. Now, case in point, I am not, and I can tell you here, I'm standing proud to say, if I open up a bag of chips, I'm not eating just one. I don't care, they could be sprouted, they could be healthy. I grab one, crunch, 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 okay, one, another one, grab another one grab another one, grab another. I could eat the whole bag just in one sitting, and it's because of this, right? Lights up the pathways, very addictive. Get, you want more and more and more and more until your hand gets to the bottom, and then you're, you're like, what just happened? It's not a willpower game. 
it's that it's a it's a biological process that's going on so i need you to to take a breath and forgive yourself if you're one of those like me who can't just eat one or two sometimes it's better not having it at all my husband can eat just one two or three and i want to just smack him like how do you do that how do you do that i can't do that so i just stay away from it because i know i get myself into trouble so what really happens in your body this is any kind of sugar, right? So here's our beautiful body with, everybody has one, a pancreas, okay? Anytime you eat a carbohydrate food, now, and I'm not here to say carbs are the enemy and carbs are, I'm not anti-carb girl, okay? But here are the facts. Carbohydrates are found in foods like sweets, right? We know this, this is the obvious one. Anything that's sugary is carbohydrate rich. It's also found in fruit. Fruits are carbs. Those of you who are a diabetic or pre-diabetic know that you got to watch your fruit intake because if you eat too much, it's going to shoot your blood sugar up. I don't care if it's, you know, an apple or apple juice or what, it will raise blood sugar. Um, other carbohydrates are vegetables. All vegetables are carbohydrates, even broccoli. Now, granted, they're not going to have the effect like, you know, a soda would have, but it is inherently a carbohydrate. Yogurt, beans, and lentils. Um, bread, cereal, rice, pasta, these are all carbohydrates and cereal crackers. You know, we all the starchy things, potatoes, all of those things. So anytime we eat a carbohydrate, our body will break it down into sugar. So diabetics need to understand this, and I'm sure if you if have been to a dietitian or you've met with, some, with, with a counselor after being diagnosed, they probably explain this to you. Anytime you eat a carbohydrate, it, it translates, your body will break it down into sugar, and it will raise your blood sugar. So that's what these do, some more than others. So when you eat that carbohydrate food, breaks down into sugar, and then here's what happens that increase in your blood sugar will trigger that pancreas to produce insulin in an attempt to normalize your blood sugar. And that's what a healthy body was designed to do. We all have these beautiful pancreas that just will, will pump out that insulin when it signals a rise in blood sugar, no matter if it's from an apple or if it's from a, a soda, okay? It's what a healthy body was designed to do, but when we eat too many and the wrong kinds of carbohydrates, it will force our body to overproduce insulin. I need you to pay attention to this, these next couple of slides. Really listen to me here. It's, it's the insulin response in our body that causes trouble. It's the sugar or the processed foods that break down into sugar that raise the, the blood sugar, raise the insulin, that triggers a few things. Fat storage. Anytime you force your body to produce extra insulin. Insulin's a fat storage hormone, so what will it do? It will help your body very easily store fat. Now, if you eat an apple, I'm not saying, oh my God, your body's gonna store fat. It's not that. It's when we eat that bagel for breakfast. That's basically sugar. White, I don't care if it's white or wheat, it's sugar. I'd rather you just eat the butter on top of that bagel versus the bagel because honestly, the, the butter doesn't stimulate the insulin. That bagel, especially the Panera size, right? That huge like size of your head bagel. That's actually like probably six or seven servings. So you eat that and then you have a glass of juice with that. When you eat that, now it sounds like, oh, that's a really whole wheat bagel with a glass of juice. You are shooting your blood sugar up. You are shooting your insulin up. Your body loves to then store fat. And then you wonder why, but I just ate a whole wheat bagel. Why, why can't I get rid of this body fat? Or why, why is it so hard for me to, to lose weight? Um, and that's why anytime you stimulate that insulin to the effect that we do, it's going to cause this body fat storage and increasing hunger, increasing cravings, decreasing metabolism. So it really is a subject of insulin. And we all have the ability, most of us, unless you have a pancreas that just no longer functions, and that's very possible, 
right? If you're diabetic or type 1 diabetic, that, that is what happens. But if you do have a functioning pancreas that produces insulin and you want to control your cravings and you want to lower blood sugar to a healthy range, you got to watch the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating and the type, okay? And we'll get into that. So fat gets a pass now. The good kinds of fats get a pass. We used to say, you know, fat's causing heart disease, and that's not the case. Now, certain fats, if you eat like trans fat and things like that, that we're, that's a whole different ballgame. But the healthier fats, which I'll talk about, they're actually supportive of our health, of our insulin levels, of over, our, our, our overall general well-being. So it's the sugar that is actually, because we talk about diabetes a lot, but what about heart disease? It's actually the sugar that is the culprit behind heart disease. And here's why. Now, I, I gotta tell you, I won't name the person, but in my family, a rather young person was having issues with cholesterol and A1C at an A, hemoglobin A1C, which is a measure of um, blood sugar that looks in the blood like 100 to 120 pa days past. So it's more of a historical look at what your blood sugar has been. And this person, <clears throat> her doctor said, well, no, you don't have to worry about, you, you don't have to, for your cholesterol, her cholesterol was the biggest, you know, factor for her. And, and her doctor said, well, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the carbohydrates for the cholesterol, it's the fat, it's the fat, it's the fat. So she wasn't even thinking about all the sugars and stuff that she was eating. Well, when her and I talked, I said, listen, I see what you're eating and you think it's healthy, but let's back off some of these processed carbohydrates. Let's add some really good healthy fats and there's some good fibers. Her cholesterol came down very gradually, but it was because she was doing the right, she was pulling out the processed things that were spiking, you know, the, the blood sugar, the insulin, and the cholesterol. So it increases the bad cholesterol and it decreases the good cholesterol. This is what sugar does in the body. And I'm not just talking about white sugar, I'm talking about all those processed flowery type foods. And it increases stress hormones, cortisol. We've all heard that stress hormone cortisol loves to store belly fat, right? And it, and it, it just, it's a metabolic nightmare in the body when we produce too much of that cortisol. It's, it can be helpful, and, and cortisol is a natural um, hormone, but, but when we produce too much of it, it can get our, our bodies out of whack. Um, and then also it can make your blood more likely to clot, over clot. So sugar is just, you know, it's the culprit behind a lot of things, okay? So I'm going to give you five things. Five, I want to say that they're easy because they really are easy. They're, it's all about choices, right? When you wake up in the morning, every little thing you do contributes to your well-being or subtracts from it, and they're all choices. No one's standing there with a gun to your head, hopefully, <laughs> telling you what to do. You, can, you have free will to do whatever you want, and I want you to understand that, right? We all have free will, so anything that I'm telling you, you can choose not to do it. You could choose to do one or two of them and leave the rest, and that's totally cool too. Whatever works for you to start, and I'm gonna give you five little uh, tips here to not only end the sugar addiction, if that is a, a problem for you, but also to help really keep, get your blood more in balance and, and help your body just inch more towards the well-being that you deserve, right? We all deserve to be in healthy bodies, and we're all worthy of that, so please know that. Okay, so the first one is discover. Second one is balance your blood sugar with healthy meals. Third one is don't be fooled by artificial sweeteners. Fourth is get your Z's, and we're going to go into each one of these individually. And the fifth is, this is the last because it's the one, it's, it's the very supplement. Um, and I'll give you some supplements that you can use to help with sugar cravings and to help kind of balance uh, things out there. But I, I don't want to put supplements first because it's, all the other things kind of stack on top of it. Supplement very last because you can never supplement your way out of a bad diet. You just can't. I, I don't even want you to waste your money on supplements if you're not you know, doing the, the, the first four to begin with. So first one is discover. This is really <coughs> understanding the many ways that sugar is hiding out in our foods. 
When you look, first of all, ignore the front of the package, please. It's a giant billboard designed to get you to buy whatever is, is whatever it is, right? Ignore the front of the package. Flip it around. I don't even really want you to look at the fat and the cholesterol. I don't even care about that. My biggest thing is the ingredients. I want you to look at the ingredients of the food because that'll tell you really if it's food or if it's just a processed food nightmare. So if you Google, this is just a partial list, but all of the things that mean sugar. This is a small list, but things like date sugar, honey, <laughs> Oh, but it comes from a bee, Melanie. Doesn't that mean I can eat as much as I want? Uh, it's better than white sugar, but I certainly don't want you loading up and putting honey on everything because your body, it's not going to spike the blood sugar as high as white sugar, but it's still going to elevate it. If you're diabetic and you're eating honey all day long, you're never going to get your blood sugar down. It's a reasonable substitute for the others, but it's not something that I would say, you know, free range. Um, sucrose, syrup, molasses, all of these things mean sugar and will have that same effect on the body. So when you look at a, a label, now 2020 to 2021, we are going to be, um, actually food manufacturers are being tasked to, uh, hopefully this is, oh good, are going to be tasked to add added sugars under sugar. But right now, when you look at a food label, You'll see sugars there. That includes sh added sugars and natural sugar. So this is a tomato sauce. Now tomatoes are a natural source of sugar, right? It's because it's a vegetable. Vegetables will have natural sugars. Some of that is um, natural and some of it is added. And how do you know? You look at the ingredients and there's sugar right there. Um, but the new food labels will tell you how many grams of added sugars. I'm not concerned about natural sugars, which are found in vegetables and fruits and milk, like lactose you know, is, you know, is the milk sugar. I'm not concerned so much about that. I am concerned about the added sugars, the, the honey, the syrups, the date paste, the whatever else they're adding um, to, to these products, um, you know, agave, whatever they call it. Um, that's, that's the added, and that's what I'm concerned about. So here's just some surprising and maybe some not so surprising sources of added sugar. So pasta sauce, big one. Um, I gotta tell you, I, I love, uh, this is the Little Italy pasta sauce is amazing because it doesn't have any added sugar. How do I know? I look at the ingredient list and there's no sugar in it. There is, I mean, there might be grams, but the ingredient list, some varieties may, but it's vine ripened fresh tomatoes, water, onion, garlic, extra virgin olive oil, Romano cheese, black pepper, and spices. That's it. But when you see some of the uh, pasta sauces out there, and there's, there's actually quite a few of them now are, are being made without um, added sugar. But when you look at, you know, sauces like that, or, or even some that are gourmet, they're going to have added sugar. And that's where that 150 pounds of sugar, uh, that's where it starts sneaking in, right? Pasta sauce, bread is a huge one. Bread is a huge source of added sugar. Um, yogurts, of course, we know that some of them can have as much sugar as a candy bar. It's kind of crazy. Uh, also granola bars and nutrition bars, salad dressings, coleslaw. I mean, things that don't even really taste sweet. Condiments like ketchups and barbecue sauce loaded with sugar. Now, there are some options out there that are reduced sugar. So. There's one called True Made. It's Pitmaster, lower sugar. It's 70% less sugar. So it's not going to be totally sugar free. And, and that's okay because, you know, if you have a sugar free um, barbecue sauce, it's not going to taste like barbecue sauce. And, you know, so it's, it's less sugar. There are some ketchups out there that um, this one, the primal line of um, condiments don't have any added sugars added or any um, artificial sweeteners put in them. So the Primal Kitchen um, ketchup is literally just tomato concentrate, balsamic vinegar, some spices, some jalapeno. Now, I like this. My husband won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. So <laughs> if you're used to your, you know, your ketchup, then you may want to just go with a lower sugar ketchup and not something so what I call Navy Seal, um, but there are condiments out there that, that can help you decrease it without having to totally give up that 
Um, but you know, and how many of us use a tablespoon of ketchup, right? I mean, we're just using probably half a cup with for our fries or whatever we're putting it on. Um, and also cereals. That's a huge one. Um, even your healthier cereals of lots of added sugar. Um, smoothies, Ensure, Boost. I know a lot of doctors will prescribe Ensure and Boost to help you meet your nutrition needs. Uh, you might as well go to McDonald's and get a milkshake. Uh, honestly, they're, they're terrible. I would rather you make your own smoothie and you control what goes in it because when you look at Ensure and you look at Boost, top of the list of the ingredients, which are the predominant amount of, of food, like the higher up on the list, that means most of that product has that ingredient in it. Sugar is one of the top ones, right? In these, in these so-called in, in these so-called nutrition shakes. So what I would suggest, get a decent blender, it doesn't have to be a Vitamix, it could be just like a decent Nutribullet, and make your own shakes where you add your own almond milk in there and you add some peanut butter and you add a little bit of fruit, maybe a handful of greens, maybe some flax seeds in there and you blend it up. Experiment with it because when you, you know, leave it to the processed and the convenience foods, all you're doing is getting sugar. I can promise you that. Even the smoothies that you would get out, you know, you buy them, you know, at, at a store, Panera, Robex, they taste like a dream, yeah, and they're like tons and tons and tons of sugar. So, <clears throat> watching out for health halo foods is huge. Now, health halo foods are those foods that sound really healthy, but they're not so healthy. Uh, orange juice. You want to spike your sugar, you want to start sugar cravings right when you get up in the morning, pour yourself a nice big glass of orange juice because that will do the trick every single time. It's, by, it, it's, it's what we give diabetics when they, when they have low blood sugar, right? We got to get their blood sugar up, give them orange juice. So if you want to elevate your blood sugar and you want those cravings to kick in, you want to kick up your insulin level, have a nice big glass of orange juice in the morning. I'd rather you eat an orange, right? The fiber in the fruit helps to slow that down. Juice really isn't, the, isn't a good option. Um, if, you, if you have to have that juice in the morning, tiny, tiny bit and have it after you've eaten something because then it won't spike up that blood sugar. So <clears throat> not that there's added sugar in 100% orange juice, but when you look at the sugar, it's about five teaspoons of sugar in just an eight ounce glass of orange juice. Robex smoothie, an average medium Robex smoothie, which is a smoothie place. I'm not sure if there's any of them around here, but 20 teaspoons of sugar loaded with fruit puree and all. It's delicious, <laughs> I'll tell you, but it's loaded with sugar. And a, a yogurt parfait. Nine, make your own yogurt parfait with just plain yogurt, fruit, a little drizzle of honey if you want a little sweet, because I get it, you know, just sometimes plain yogurt's like eating wallpaper paste. You have to have something sweet, a little bit of fruit, drizzle of honey, but you control it, right? You control the amount of sugar that goes in there. If not, that's what you're getting, 19 spoons of sugar. And some other ones, healthy cereal, about three teaspoons, and Check this one out. Okay, guys, just because there's a guy climbing the side of a cliff does not mean it's a healthy nutrition bar. We sell these at Heinen's. I can't stand these bars, I gotta tell you. Um, cliff Bar has about six teaspoons of, of added sugar. Some of the bars, if you like bars, I'm a bar girl. I love the convenience of a bar on the go. There's a handful that I like. Um, one of them, is the lower sugar kind bars. I mean, you, you, you can, we often have these 10 for 10, so if you're looking for a quick snack, the five grams of sugar or less kind bars are wonderful. Um, I love, huge fan of the Raw Rev Glow Bar because they're really good healthy fats, good amount of protein and fiber. So if you are a diabetic or you're just somebody trying to get your sugar um, under control, your, your cravings under control, these bars are wonderful, the whole variety, because they have a little sweet to them, but they have enough fat and fiber to help keep you satisfied and balance your blood sugar and insulin. So they're called a the Raw Rev Glow Bar. <clears throat> the Bulletproof collagen bars are really good as well. Um, hemp bars. 
don't be thrown off by the name, you know, just, it's pretty. It's a bar. It's, it's made with hemp, which is a protein, uh, a seed, but it's a protein um, source, and it's a, a wonderful um, meal kind of in between snack or a meal replacement with maybe some veggies and a hard-boiled egg. Wodo Bars, these are cool because they are a local company. I, can't, I, I don't remember where they're located, but they're, they're like... Um, mock cookie dough, but they are made with decent ingredients. I mean, they're, they're not artificially sweetened or anything like that. They're not like eating a Snickers bar. So if that's what you're expecting, it's, it's a little bit, but it's, it's good healthy fat. It's very, very filling. Um, and then another one is called the Good to Go Bar. And this one is a, a lower sugar bar with lots of fiber. So all of these can really help be like an in-between meal or a meal replacement if you really are on the go. I, I rely on a lot of these. We have a bone broth bar as well that uh, we sell at our stores too, and that's a really good one. Um, so here's what I want you to do for this first one. Action step, begin Start your week with being a food detective, a label detective, and look for all of, I don't want you to clean out your cupboards, right? But just start to be aware. Look at food labels. Look at what you have in your kitchen and see what the biggest, like the one that you, the one product or two products that you eat on a regular basis that have lots of added sugar and commit to replacing it with something that has less or no added sugar. And there's, like maybe you're doing, you know, spaghetti sauce, or you're doing pasta every week and then the sauce that you use has added sugar. Replace it with one that doesn't. Just, you, you have to, this will take a little time, but once you, you can spot them, then you'll know your go-to products. Um, but remove the biggest culprit. I'm not asking you to remove all of it because you're not going to listen to me anyway. <laughs> remove the biggest culprit and you'll see things start to shift for you. Because remember, anytime you're adding, eating stuff with added sugar, that will increase the cravings for sugary foods, whether it's a sauce or whether it's actually sugary foods. Anything that has added sugar will increase your cravings. So you have to just be real, real careful that you're, you're looking at all sources. So the second is, this is where you're looking at your meals, okay? So we, we've educated ourselves of where the added sugars are. Second is balance your blood sugar with healthy meals. So really, it's all about balancing blood sugar. If you can have your blood sugar balanced, your cravings for sugar will go down. I, I, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that that will be the case. If your blood sugars are balanced, your cravings will go down. There's two rules, very simple rules to, to really getting your meals underway to where they're balanced, they're nutritious, and they're satisfying, and they're blood sugar balancing. And, and listen, you, you don't have to have diabetes to, to be concerned about the blood sugar. It's for everybody, okay? I tell people all the time, eat like you're a diabetic, and you'll never become a diabetic, right? We should all be eating concerned about our blood sugars because it, as we get older, it becomes a little bit more difficult. And we have to be really, really um, conscious of that. We still want to enjoy, right? But just be conscious of it. So to balance blood sugar, follow these two rules. First, load your meals, load your plates with superfoods. And I'll get in what, what these are in a second. And then you're going to want to add healthy fat. Got to add the superfoods, then add the healthy fat. Healthy fat is critical because it's the only macronutrient. So we've got carbohydrates, protein, and fat. We all know what the carbs are. The proteins are your meats and your, you know, your seafood and eggs and, and all of that. That stimulates blood sugar a little bit. It can, but fat is really neutralizing. So when we add good healthy fats to our meals, it helps to balance cravings decrease sugar cravings, and balance overall blood sugar. So superfoods are greens, rainbow fruits and veggies, omega-3s, I'll get into each one of these, balanced proteins, and functional foods. So these are your five superfoods. Now, I'm not going to mention meats in, in this because superfoods are all plant-based, but it doesn't mean you have to follow a vegetarian or vegan diet. I don't. Um, but everything I'm going to talk about here is plant-based. So when we talk about balanced proteins, I'll talk about alternatives if you're a meat eater um, that you can add. But everything here is going to be plant-based, and then you can add your, your cleaner proteins as you, as you see fit. So greens are basically greens, <laughs> anything green, right? Swiss chard, arugula, kale, spinach, cabbage. I mean, there's 
go into our produce department and it's all there. All greens. Greens are pound for pound, calorie for calorie, the most nutrient dense, the most nutritious food you can get your hands on. So I would recommend if you eat greens, keep eating them every single day, once or more or three times if you can. Um, put them in smoothies. Add them to, add, have a side salad every day with dinner. You know, fold them, saute them and fold them in omelets. However you can get them in or you can, this, this is a great option for, for those of you who just don't, maybe you live alone and you, if you buy a big thing of lettuce, it's just going to go bad. There's um, superfoods powders, greens powders. These are dehydrated greens in powdered form. You could throw them in a smoothie. Um, it's a very easy way to get your greens um, if you want to go there. I just like greens. I like the real, you know, the, the nice big salad for dinner or a side salad, throw it in my smoothie. I just like the real, you know, the, the fresh greens. Um, so you want to definitely get these in because they are more alkalizing and detoxifying in the body. Um, abundance of chlorophyll, vitamins, minerals, we need these. These are just, there's, there's no way around this. If you, can, if you don't have a problem digesting them, you need to get these in your diet. They, these can change your world if you get at least a serving or two in every day. And they're very good for blood sugar. This one we learned in kindergarten, right? Rainbow fruits and veggies. Full spectrum though. We don't want to leave any colors out because every single color gives you a different chemical property. Phytochemicals are these natural plant chemicals that really are what add the, the health boosting benefits. So every color from blueberries to even cauliflower, right? will have specific nutrients and certain um, properties that can benefit your health. So you, you want to just chop that rainbow and eat the rainbow, as they say. Um, why phytochemicals are so important? They reduce your risk of most chronic diseases if you're eating them on a regular basis. Diabetes, arterial diseases, certain cancers. We say with fruits and vegetables, eat twice as many veggies as fruits, and that's because of the whole sugar thing, right? Sugar, you know, fruit's wonderful, but if you're eating it all day, every day, it, it can cause a problem with blood sugar, and we know that. It can, it can trigger that. I mean, I'd rather see you eat an apple than a Snickers bar any old day, but you think about it, eating a serving of fruit or two, maybe a day, small serving, and then many more vegetables is really gonna help with that balance. Um, the most low glycemic, Fruits that you can get your hands on are berries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, cranberries, not cranberry raisins, I'm saying cranberries, uh, any kind of berries. Those are going to have less of an impact on sugar, won't spike that, won't cause that, that, um, that high insulin response. Omega-3s. Now, most people, when you, when you say omega-3s, you think fish, right? And that's true. That's like the gold standard omega-3, salmon and trout and tuna, the really high omega-3 fish. The plant-based versions are chia seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, hemp seeds. Uh, you have different types of omega-3s. You've got your um, your DHA and your EPA, and that's really concentrated in fish. And that's really where, you, if you are a fish lover and you like that fatty fish like the salmon and the trout and, and halibut and things like that, that will really help give, get your omega-3s in. But a lot of people, I tell them, you know, even if you do fish, still aim for the plant-based varieties as well because you get so many more uh, different phytochemicals and things in the plant-based as well. Now, omega-3s, why we say omega-3s, these are anti-inflammatory, which means they reduce inflammation in the body. It um, reduces risk of most diseases. So like when we think of inflammation, chronic inflammation in the body, that is actually at the root of most of the diseases that are plaguing Americans. Diabetes, cancer, heart disease, they all are pretty much their roots are inflammation. Omega-3s can help reduce inflammation in the body, as well as the fruits and veggies can do that as well, but omega-3s really can help there. Um, so get your fish, get your, um, your seeds, um, and also can help maintain eye and brain health. So when we're planning our meals, we wanna make sure we're getting some, like so for example, I did an overnight oat um, 
recipe last night. I just did like a quarter cup of oats and I did a, a quarter cup of unsweetened almond milk. And then the rest of it, I added hemp seeds, I added flax seeds, I added chia seeds, I added almonds. So there was a lot of good healthy fat in there. Little bit of blueberries, just a little bit. Woke up this morning, mixed it all up, and that was breakfast. And it was really easy, but it was a little bit of the grain and a lot of nuts and seeds, primarily the omega-3s. That's how you fit them in, right? It's, you don't just sit there and eat a spoonful of chia seeds. You mix them into things. Smoothies work really well to get all of these types of, of foods in. So I would encourage you to experiment. You know, if, if, you, if you mess up, so what? Tomorrow's another day, but just start with a liquid base of an unsweetened um, almond milk or an unsweetened um, plant-based milk, and then you add a little bit of the nuts and seeds or nut butters, like a um, walnut butter or almond butter, um, cashew butter. Peanut butter's fine as well, but um, experiment with some of the different types of, of nut butters out there. Um, just so you know, Almond butter and peanut butter, true almond butter and true peanut butter has one ingredient, <laughs> peanuts or almonds. Jif, Skippy, Peter Pan, they're yummy, I know, I know, but they're really not peanut butter. They've got sugar in them. Flip it around, look at the ingredients, even Jif natural, oh it's natural. <laughs> Flip it around, ingredient sugar. So. You can tell when you put a spoon into a container of Jif and you can dip it in there again and again and again. You want to keep eating it. It's the sugar that's causing you to do that. You really can't do that. I mean, you could, but you don't want to eat the whole thing of almond butter for the most part. I mean, it, there's no sugar and it. it's just the almond. A little bit of salt's okay too, um, which might be another ingredient. Um, but, you know, stick with just nut as the only ingredient. Otherwise, it's just a peanut spread, is what they call it. When we're balancing our meals, think about our proteins. We don't want to, to forget about proteins. Now, these are going to be plant-based proteins, but cleaner sources of protein would be like your you know, pasture-raised, uh, free-range eggs, right? Um, Grass-fed beef, uh, free-range chicken and turkey. Pork is fine too. No hormones, no added hormones, no antibiotics, right? If you shop Heinen's, you know that we do a really good job with our meats at keeping the hormones, added hormones. Gotta, gotta, I, I learned from our meat director that labeling had to change because they couldn't say no hormones because we all produce hormones, including animals naturally produce them, but there are no added hormones, no antibiotics. Those are your cleaner sources of protein. Um, but if you're looking plant-based, Quinoa, tempeh, beans, legumes. So, you know, beans and, and lentils and peas, these are a really good, affordable way to have a meatless meal and, and get a good amount of protein and also fiber, which can be very balancing for sugar, right? Um, I love lentils. In my house, what I do is I'll boil up a bag of lentils in the week, beginning of the week. And then I, they don't, you don't have to soak lentils. That's the beautiful thing. Lentils, you just boil them for about 15 minutes, and then you drain them, and then you put them in the refrigerator, and then you can add them to foods to in, increase the protein and fiber content. So what I'll do is I'll boil up some lentils, then I'll add them to salad as a meat replacement or in addition to the meat. I might have a nice piece of salmon on a salad and sprinkle some lentils on there. Very balancing for the blood sugar or I'll add them to marinara sauces to give it a little boost in nutrition. There's a lot of ways that you can add beans and things like that. Fold them into your eggs on Sunday. A little bit of sprinkle of you know, lentils or beans in, in your eggs, in your omelets, a wonderful way. Um, quinoa is, you know, we've all heard of this. Quinoa is just, it's, it's been around now. It's, it's an ancient seed, actually. It's not even a grain. It's actually a seed. But it can be a nice source of um, pro, uh, protein for people who are maybe eating less uh, meat or trying to eat less meat. Um, you can serve it in place of rice. Uh, you could even serve it as like a little breakfast cereal. You cook it up and you can add some little bit of berries to it or not. Um, some people will eat this for breakfast in place of like oats. Um, tempeh is one of our favorite things in the Jatsik household as meat replacement. Now, 
I'm going to warn you, it ain't pretty to look at. <laughs> but when you cook it up, it actually has a really nice flavor. So it is a fermented soy product. It's not the same as tofu. It has a very meaty kind of a dense texture and you can fry it up like pan fry it up in a little bit of soy sauce um, and then you can top a salad with it or you can crumble it and add it as like a meat substitute um, but yeah it's actually a very high fiber high protein meat substitute just don't get thrown off by how it looks because it isn't pretty right but but once you cook it up it really is very my husband loves this stuff I know you're probably thinking the poor deprived guy no he asks he asks for tempeh Believe it or not. Some other things that you could do, pastas that, pasta can create a problem for people, right? Um, there are so many plant-based pastas, now bean-based pastas that are so friendly to blood sugar. And, and so for me, I know when I eat pasta, regular pasta, I know it spikes the blood sugar because I want to eat after that. I'm like, I just had pasta, I should be full, and all I want to do is eat more. And that's how I know it spiked my blood sugar. It caused almost like a crash, a rise and a fall. There are these bean-based pastas. One that I love is called Explore Cuisine, and it is 100% edamame and mung bean pasta. So when you look at the back, that's all it is, you look at the back and you look at the total carbohydrates to, to dietary fiber. There are 20 grams of carbohydrate per serving, but 14 grams of fiber. So if you know that you can subtract the fiber from the carbohydrate to get what they call your net carbohydrates, this is a very low glycemic, diabetic friendly pasta. Um, just be careful that you don't eat too much, if you know what I mean, right? <laughs> um, but wonderful source of protein too, 24 grams. It, this is like a, you don't even have to add meat to this. You could have this with a little bit of sauce, and I'm telling you some veggies, maybe some roasted uh, Brussels sprouts or broccoli, amazing. Holds up really well, it's not mushy like some of those gluten-free pastas can be mushy, not so. Um, with that. So th you'll find more and more of these bean-based um, pastas coming out. Proteins, whether it's from animal or plant-based, these will prevent spikes in blood sugar. And again, anytime you can normalize your blood sugar, you're going to decrease sugar cravings. You're going to decrease that, that need or that, that want for more and more carbohydrates. And also it slows digestion slows digestion to help you feel full. That's what protein does. But there is a little word of warning. I put up their beans and I put lentils and I put all these fun things. So my mother, she's got a good sense of humor. Several years ago, Christmas time, all the gifts were open and she had one left. She says, this is, this is an extra gift. And I said, oh, mom. She says, no, 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 it's just an extra gift. She says, so I opened it up, and she starts laughing. She goes, you know, anytime I ever come to your house to eat, I always leave <laughs> with more than I, I came with, right? She says, my stomach grumbles, and I'm just so gassy. So I opened up the gift, and, and this is what it was. <laughs> She insisted that I hang this in my kitchen so that anybody that comes over, they, they've been warned, right? Eat here and get gas just ahead. Know that any time you add beans and lentils and all of these wonderful high fiber products, you're gonna get a little bit gassy. So to counterbalance that, start very slowly. Start, any high fiber anything start very slowly let your body get used to it because it's not that it's going to hurt you but it, it's not used to it right we should be getting to balance our blood sugar to balance our cravings anywhere between 25 to 45 grams of fiber per day average American gets about 10 on a good day. So if you're all jazzed up and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go eat some fiber, you're gonna, you're gonna be calling me, complaining, and I don't wanna hear it. So I'm telling you, start slow and always increase your water as you increase your fiber, because you wanna flush that out. You don't want it to, you don't wanna back up. You don't want that to happen either, because it can have the opposite effect. But just start slow and you'll be fine. So now functional foods, this is the last part of building your meals, right? You want to keep in mind that on top of, you know, your rainbow fruits and veggies and all these really good superfoods that you're adding to your plate, 
Functional foods can really going to be the icing on the cake, so to speak. And these are foods that have potentially positive effects on your health above and beyond general nutrition. They are foods that you're probably already using, right? Um, herbs and spices, matcha tea, which is a green tea, and cacao, which is chocolate. So here's what these are. Herbs and spices. Now, any herb and spice would do, but ginger and turmeric, fresh ginger, fresh turmeric are amazing. You can do this in powdered form as well, but um, if you're making smoothies, like I know you're all gonna start doing, you can put a little bit of fresh turmeric in that smoothie, helps to decrease inflammation in the body. Um, and you can also add a tiny bit, like a, maybe a half inch piece of fresh ginger root in there. All of these things help to decrease inflammation. They all help to balance blood sugar, which will help with those cravings, those sugar cravings. Treats joint pain. So if you have any issues with joint pain in your body, turmeric is amazing, um, either fresh or in a powdered form. If you don't want to do the fresh, you can always get it in a powdered form. But this is why smoothies are, are an amazing addition to your, to your meals. Make one of your meals every day a smoothie where you can add these little functional ingredients in there. Because let's be honest, most days of the week, I'm not just going to sit down and gnaw on a piece of uh, turmeric root. How am I going to get it in? I throw it in a smoothie. Or I'll grate it up and throw it in my vegetables. Um, but these are really easy, just a little bit. You don't need a lot of it. Um, some other parsley and cilantro, wonderful. Any kind of herb or spice, though, start using more of it if you are using it. Um, cilantro is specifically um, special for detoxification and purification. So if you've got some heavy metal issues going on, cilantro is really good at pulling that out of the body. Matcha tea is green tea in powdered form. You know, listen, if you drink green tea, great. Keep drinking it because it's amazing at decreasing inflammation, fighting sugar cravings. But matcha tea is actually much, much more powerful because it's the entire green tea leaf ground up in powdered form, so it's much more potent. Um, it tastes earthy. Um, so if you're not used to earthy, you start slow, or you mix it maybe with some of your other tea that you're drinking. But it is super, super powerful. It's considered an, a Japanese anti-cancer agent, promotes energy and well-being, gives you that lift and that ability to focus without the jittery side effects of like coffee. So if you're real sensitive to coffee, you might do really well with matcha tea. It's a great uh, it's a great thing to add to your self-care routine is a little bit of, and if, if you don't want to spend the money on matcha tea because it is more pricey than just green tea, then just keep drinking your green tea. But green tea is super, super important in decreasing inflammation in the body. Um, and again, one glass is equivalent to many more glasses of the, the regular green tea. So, and then cacao, chocolate. Yeah, I'm not talking about like greasy peanut butter cups here. I wish I were, I know, because they're amazing. But cacao is chocolate. It's made from the fermented dried seeds of the Theobroma cacao tree. There's a chocolate tree. Did you know that? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Um, the darker, the better. So what, what I'm saying here is like when you look at a chocolate bar, you want to make sure it's at least 70 to 72% cacao or higher. The, the higher percentage is going to be more bitter, right? But it's that bitterness that's lending to that um, sugar craving, fighting the sugar craving. So if you love a little bit of chocolate and you do like a 72% cacao or higher and you just take it and you let it melt on your tongue, it's not only is it therapeutic, but it will take a sugar craving away because it's giving you what you need with a little bit of sweet without doing too much damage. Um, so. The um, endangered species line is my one of my favorite, as well as, this is a new one, it is not cheap, but this is one you savor. You literally take a square and you eat it, and then the next day another square, like a little tiny, but it's called Hue. This is probably one of the highest quality chocolates I've found in terms of ingredients. Um, we sell several different flavors, but this one's a cashew butter and vanilla bean dark chocolate. Super good, I mean, if you wanna treat yourself, to something for Valentine's Day or just because you're you, go buy, <laughs> go buy a hue. <laughs> I, I, that's a, that'd be a good commercial, wouldn't it? Um, so yeah, 70% cacao or higher. Um, if you're used to milk chocolate, that's gonna taste bitter, but step your way up. Maybe you go to 60% and then 70%. 
But why chocolate? It's one of the highest sources of magnesium, which is very important in blood sugar control. Uh, more antioxidants than most green tea if you're the higher cacao. So you're really getting a lot of good um, bang for your buck with really good dark chocolate. Um, contains an antidepressant, natural antidepressant called tryptophan. So that's why chocolate makes us feel good, right? And it may help reduce blood pressure and elevate your good cholesterol. A little bit every day, square. What I do is I'll take one of these bars and I break it up into like as many squares as, as I can get it broken up into. And I'll put it in a little Tupperware container behind a closed door, because if it's on the counter, let's be honest, I'm going to be just eating it all day. And after dinner, it's always after dinner, I'll take like one or two squares and I'll just like let them melt on my tongue. And, and it's, just, it's just enough, right? It's just enough. And you, you're, you can feel good about it too. Okay, step two in this whole meal planning thing is including some healthy fats. You don't want fat-free meals because that doesn't do anything to fight sugar cravings. Fat helps to balance those cravings. Healthy fats include avocados and nuts and seeds and nut butters, any kind of nut or seed. Pumpkin seeds, uh, walnuts, almonds, cashews, pistachios, grass-fed butter like your Kerrygold butter on the bottom there, ghee, which is butter, clarified butter. It's basically butter fat. So for those of you who may have dairy intolerances, most people who have dairy intolerances can tolerate ghee because the casein and the whey are removed from it. You can find that in most grocery stores. Heinen sells it. Sometimes it's refrigerated, sometimes it's not. It doesn't need to be, but it is a nice alternative to butter with a very high smoke point. So you can use that um, to, to really saute things and even um, brown things without worrying about destroying the, the fat. Um, also, avocado oil is amazing, great source of fat. So I'm saying when you're making a salad or you're cooking vegetables or you're making a meal, you want to make sure you're adding some fat. A smoothie, don't make it all fruit. Add some almond butter to it. Add some nuts and seeds to that. Blend it up. Add some avocado. That helps to balance the blood sugar, which will fight cravings. You'll know this is working when two, three hours after you've eaten the meal, you're not hungry. You know it's working when you can go four to five hours between meals without feeling like you're ready to eat your arm off. It's not working when you've eaten a meal and an hour later you're hungry. That means that meal probably didn't have enough fat, it didn't have enough fiber, it didn't have enough superfoods, it didn't have enough nutrition. That's always how I know whether I did well with my meal planning or not. If I'm hungry in a couple of hours, something was missing and it's usually the fat. Extra virgin olive oil is amazing, <clears throat> especially for low um, salad dressings and very, very low temperature cooking. Coconut oil is another one. And MCT oil, which is a fraction of um, coconut oil, and it's very powerful for brain health. That's something that you can get in our wellness department. But those are all good healthy fats. Um, make sure, just make sure your meals have some good healthy fat in them, okay? That'll really help with the cravings. Now, this doesn't mean go wild. These are alternatives to natural alternatives to sweeteners that are an upgrade. These aren't, hey, eat, eat raw local honey all day, every day. No, it's just if you're going to do white sugar or honey, honey's a little bit lower glycemic. It's not going to be as impactful, but if you eat too much of it, it will be, right? Um, pure maple syrup, not Aunt Jemima pancake syrup. Pure maple syrup, a little bit of that is a better alternative than you know white sugar or agave nectar. Stay away from agave nectar, please. Um, coconut sugar is another one. It comes from coconut sap, um, and it is a little bit lower glycemic, so it's, it can be a reasonable replacement um, to regular sugar. And <clears throat> coconut nectar is another one. Yep, that's it. So that's if you're looking for something as an alternative, this would be an upgrade for you. So start your day with a smoothie. That would be your action step for meal planning. That could be one thing. You don't have to change all your meals. Just convert one of your meals. Maybe it's breakfast. Maybe it's lunch. Today my smoothie was dinner because I knew I was going to be here and I wasn't going to be able to eat, so I had a smoothie for dinner. So it was easy. It had um, almond milk in it. It had some... Um, unsweetened almond milk. It had a spoonful of walnut butter. 
It had a quarter of an avocado, had some blueberries, had some greens. I think I put some hemp seeds in there. I think I even threw some carrots in there because they're still a little sweet, right? Blended it all up, I'm telling you. And it's what time? It's, it's 7.30 and I'm still full. So it, 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 make a meal a smoothie and that's all you gotta do, start there. Now the third step, we're almost through these slides. Don't be fooled by artificial sweeteners, please, okay? These things, <laughs> They're hundreds of times sweeter than regular sugar and they will fuel cravings for sugar. That's the pink packet, the yellow packet, the blue packet. Not only that, they change the composition of your gut, your microbiome, which could be a whole series in itself. When we do these artificial sweeteners, it kills off the good healthy bacteria in our gut, which could be really detrimental to our health and encourage food cravings, um, sugar cravings in particular. And if we have too much of the bad bacteria, that can give us even more food uh, sugar cravings. So when we think artificial sweeteners, most people think, well, this is helping because there's no sugar in it, but it actually, under the surface, does a lot more damage in terms of sugar cravings than it, than it helps. Um, they're just not natural. They're not natural. So what I would suggest you do Read your food labels. For any of these artificially sweetened um, ingredients, aspartame, asulfame, potassium, sucralose, saccharin, I would rather you use a little bit of raw honey than any one of these. Um, some of, they've actually shown that artificial sweeteners can raise blood sugar. It can stimulate insulin production in diabetics. So it really doesn't do good to use those. If you think about how many hundreds of times sweeter they are than regular sugar, that tricks your brain into thinking it's getting sugar, and then, then your cravings come into play. So it really, you're better off inching off of that, adding a little bit of natural sweetener to, to, to get that sweet. And then the step number four, if you're not, this should be step number one. If you're not getting enough sleep, I can promise you, you are gonna have more sugar cravings. It, it messes with hormones. So if you find yourself craving processed foods and you look at your sleep and you say, well, I, I didn't get, you may think it was enough, but I didn't get an, at least seven hours of sleep. Anything less than seven hours will cause hormonal fluctuations and increase cravings for sweets. This is where I would encourage you to start before food because you, you could be shooting yourself in the foot doing everything right but you're not getting enough sleep and your body's fighting against that. Sleep isn't a luxury. It's a necessity for so many things, especially for, for blood sugar control and, and, and food cravings. I've worked with diabetics who blood, whose blood sugars have been all over the map when we didn't even talk about nutrition, I said, we've got to get your sleep under control a little bit, a little bit. The days that they were sleeping better, their blood sugar or their fasting sugar in the morning was always better. It's all, it's a hormonal thing. So sugar, it's, it's dependent. Um, hormonal, when your hormones are out of whack because of lack of sleep, you don't, you can't reason with raging hormones, right? You just can't. So I, I need you to understand that I'm not asking you if you're only sleeping five hours, I'm not asking you to get seven. I'm just saying look at your life a little bit and see where you can sneak in 30 minutes more. Um, see how that works for your cravings. Because I know on days I'm sleep deprived, anything's fair game. I'm not eating, the, I'm not eating right. I'm craving the wrong things. And then the last one is supplement. Okay, so after all of those things that you've, that you've worked on, there are some supplements that can help decrease sugar cravings. The first and most important is a probiotic. Probiotic, natural healthy bacteria that you're really putting back into the body, it should be there to begin with. When we have an imbalance, what they call dysbiosis of bad bacteria to good bacteria, our sugar cravings, our food cravings can be way out of whack. So to get that back in line, you can eat you know, fermented foods and things that have natural um, bacteria in them, or you can take a probiotic. There are many of them on the market. We've got so many of them at Heinen's, but one of them is the Heinen's brand. Um, by the way, this weekend, there's 30% off of all supplements, isn't there, at Heinen's. So if you take supplements or you're wanting to try a probiotic, Go to Heinen's this weekend because all the supplements are going to be 30% off. That's a pretty darn good. Not just Heinen's, everything. All the supplements. Wow, okay. L-glutamine, which is, L-glutamine powder can actually help 
with with fighting sugar cravings, especially if like you if you do it on a regular basis, to always want to check with your doctor anytime you do any kind of supplement. But adding a little bit of this to water can help with a little bit of lemon can help fight sugar cravings as well. So there's a scoop in there. It's a dietary supplement. Um, third would be vitamin D. Most people are on vitamin D because we live where we live, but if your vitamin D levels are low, that can alter your cravings. Um, that can increase uh, the cravings for the wrong foods. It can make you feel not very good. So um, there's all different types of vitamin Ds that we sell, but um, I, I would start, I usually tell people to start with like a thousand, it's probably not gonna be what your doctor tells you, but a thousand to 2,000 IU a day, but you always wanna get your, your vitamin D checked before you supplement um, it should it should if it's low you'll need to supplement most of us have low vitamin D in this part of the world so um, vitamin D can help with many things so that's especially with the cravings omega-3 fatty acids fish oil or eating fish or eating more of those omega-3s can also help with with that and yep that was it so those four and then really if you're not taking a any of those supplements, what I would do, I would start with a probiotic. I think everybody should be on a good quality probiotic that could help. That's all I got. There's a lot, I know, and I went over. I'm sorry, but I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to make sure you, you got everything that you, you came here for. And if not, I can take questions, and I'm going to be here. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, no, so and that's a good question. So her question was, gluten-free breads versus regular breads, would gluten-free bread be less impactful on sugar? Um, it's pretty much the same. Um, it is. Um, it, they just removing the gluten from that, which is the protein portion, uh, that, that actually, um, they just put other flowers in there that are, are just as um, impactful on blood sugar, so not necessarily. Your sprouted breads are gonna be your best bet, gluten-free or not. Anytime you sprout something, it's less of a glycemic response. So like the angelic, this is a, a non-gluten-free bread, but angelic bakehouse is a sprouted bread. Ezekiel bread is a sprouted bread. That's always gonna have a lower glycemic impact, lower blood sugar impact than regular bread. Um, yeah, I, I love the Ezekiel line. It's, it's in the frozen department, which is why we didn't bring it, but Ezekiel is probably the, one of the best breads that, that you can get your hands on because it's 100% sprouted. So it's much better for blood sugar control. Mm -hmm. Stevia is a proper supplement for sugar. Stevia? Yeah, so, so here's my issue with Stevia. And this question always comes up, so that's why I knew someone was going to ask it. By the time Stevia gets into that white packet form, it's gone through like a 20 to 30 or 40 step process. So it's a really highly, started out as natural and then it went through this process. So I get what you're saying. If you want something, my, the best thing you could do would be to get these taste buds used to less sweet. That would be my biggest, that would be number one suggestion. If you're saying, okay, I get that, but I still want something sweet. There are stevia drops, they're extract. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but it's a better alternative than the powder. So sweet leaf, I believe, sweet leaf drops are a little bit better than the white powder. Um, it's still stevia. But. The National Diabetic Association in the United States, they prefer people with diabetic stevia than any other sort of it, Now I will say between the white packet, the yellow packet, the pink packet, absolutely. absolutely. The, those other three, scoot them out. I would much rather see you do the white packet of that, but even better would be the, the drops. Even better, let's condition our taste buds to do less sweet. But yeah, the drops are, the drops are um, sweet leaf it's called, right? Yeah, yeah, sweet leaf. Yeah, that would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. So what would be the difference between the manuka honey and regular honey? So manuka honey is, from a glycemic response, pretty much the same from my understanding, but it is much more, because um, it's very expensive, it's much more of the, um, what, what is, what's the word I'm saying? 
antibacterial, anti, it's, it's good for the, uh, the um, immune system, correct? Internal and external, yeah. So it's, it's, honey in itself can be very therapeutic. Manuka, even higher, even better. But from a glycemic response, about the same, you know, in terms of the sugar. But yeah, it's, if you could, if you could get your hands on it, Manuka. But there's one in a different category, I have a 25, 35. Oh yeah, you know, Mary, I don't know. What would be the, uh, what Do you would know? be the better? I'm, the higher one's the better, but I don't know, what does the number even mean? Do you What does the number mean, though? Do you know? Um, I'm not going to guess. It, it, it has to do with the, um, if you want to say, like the antibacterial, but the effectiveness. So it's kind of like a probiotic would have a number of yes. potency. Um, okay. That particular one, they, they have 15, 20, 25, and there's so many that we just carry the one now. Yeah. That wow. particular one. We have a weather spoon, Manuka honey. Yeah. It has to from New Zealand to be considered manuka. It's very um, localized where you can get that particular huh. honey from. And honey, actually, honey is a therapeutic food if we're using it for that reason and we're not using it just because we want to get our sugar fix on, right? I mean, it, it, it's a very, it can be a very nutritious food when used responsibly and not wildly, you know. People will use it for the immune system yeah. specifically. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Obviously, if you don't have sugar issues, right. diabetic issues. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you think about whole wheat pasta as opposed to regular? Um, <clears throat> so, so the it's still, it's still going to impact sugar. <laughs> the bean-based pastas are better. Um, I would still always use any kind of pasta, even that, as a side dish. I would never make it the main meal. Uh, make the main meal your protein and your good healthy fats and your salads and then have it as a side dish. Um, whole wheat can, will still, I I've, I've have diabetics who will say I, I do it and it, it spikes my blood sugar like anything else. So it's, it's kind of one of those health halo, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, if, I, if it's between, for me, regular pasta and whole wheat, I'll just eat the regular because I just like the flavor, the taste of it, but I, I like the bean-based pasta. Sure. When you go to the grocery store, I mean, this is all new to me, the diabetes and everything, and it's really hard to find some of these items. They have the all gluten-free section, yeah. and the low-fat section. Yeah, yeah. This, you have to really search for something, and it can take all day. We <laughs> added everything together in all the departments, but they're pretty kind of, they're, they're grouped. You mean, so like in pasta, there's gluten-free within, yeah, so I know, at least at Heinen's, they have they have what are they they've joined regular they've joined the gluten free in with the regular pastas so that you don't have to go to separate departments. Um, but if you shop at Heinen's and you want kind of like that's where your wellness consultants are they shine in helping you with these types of things. Am I right? It is group now to make it easier because people were struggling with that. Now you know where do I go for this? It's it's all sort of in with the regular, but you know it, it's you could tell that it's gluten-free because it's labeled. But seriously, this is where your wellness consultants will be your best friends. This is what they do. And they love it. Do you have handouts with these product names? Or? I, no, I don't have handouts with them. No, we just, we just brought some things because I knew they complimented the, the presentation. Yeah, I'm going to take your up. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're watching your sugar and minimizing it, some of the things that are confusing for me when I'm looking at is, there's all these complicated formulas for macro and micro, which kind of makes sense because each person's body mm -hmm. is individual. So isn't, is that the purpose of that just kind of telling you the percentage if you're trying to lose weight of what you should be doing of fats and carbs and proteins? You know what? I don't, even, I don't even look at that. I keep things so simple. I just look at my plate and say it should be mostly those superfoods, the greens and the veggies. I don't count macros because it's, to me it's just not natural. I, I don't want to have to get a calculator out. I just make sure that my plate is full of veggies, non-starchy veggies. I have a little bit of protein, good healthy fat in there. Um, anything, 
counting anything like that is too diet-like and it's not natural. It's not what our ancestors did. They just ate what made sense, right? Plants, mostly plants. A little bit of that protein, good, healthy, clean protein. So if your plate is 50% of your non-starchy veggies, whether it's roasted broccoli or roasted Brussels sprouts, and then you've got the, the little bit of protein on there, whether it's a piece of salmon, and then some good healthy fat, which is drizzled olive oil on a nice green leafy salad, that's a great meal. You gotta make sure that there's those components, but as far as numbers and percentages, like 40% fat, I, it's, it's too complicated for most so people. So do you guys do cooking demonstrations? Because I think most people would rather go plant-based, but I'll yeah. tell you what, unless you know how to cook it. Yeah, oh. yeah. And you know, we do have, I know, it could be disastrous, right? It could be. And you have to know it's how, right. Okay. Yeah, you got to you gotta know what to mix it with. They do, um, not like scheduled demos, but we do have like certain plant-based demos and things like that and cooking demos that might be taking place at any any of our Heinen stores, um, not like on a regular basis, but they, so they may have. The website yeah, you'll be able to okay. see that, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Hand all the way in the back. Do you have to grind flaxseed and chia seeds in order to realize their benefits or can you eat them? Flaxseed must be ground, um, chia seed, no. Um, when you add chia seed to a liquid, you know it expands and it gets really thick, um, or you can add it to a salad, but, but the flax seeds itself need to be ground. Um, and you want to grind them if you can't. If you can grind them right before you, you eat them, that's the best, because um, if they store too long, they can tur turn rancid. But yeah, but chia seeds, totally fine. Make the chia puddings and things like that. You can add it to stuff, and, and it's fine that way. Some people find an issue with digestion, so it might be helpful for them to grind the chia seeds as well. So it just all depends on, on how you handle that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another question? Yes, thank you. Does it ha does chickpea pasta what? With the buns it's a better it's a better alternative. I you know what in terms of the glycemic response, I find that the the bean pasta, the edamame pasta is a little bit better, but the chickpea pasta is would be a, an upgrade. Um, again, more of a side dish versus a big old. But yeah, I, I like it, and it and it's very it it holds up. So it's nice. Yeah, I, I like the chickpea pasta. Yeah. It does get a lot of foam when you boil it too, so you gotta watch the foam. Yep. Green peas and green beans, green? Not green, no, leafy greens are the greens. So but but green beans fine, peas, they're more of a starchy vegetable. Totally fine, but that would be something I would do less often than you know your non-starchy vegetable. Greens are like leafy greens, romaine and all that stuff. Romaine? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know what, it actually does have some nutrition. Yeah, it's not just crunchy water, it does. If it comes from the earth, it does have some nutrition. Yeah, but any any of those. But I would much rather you see the deeper color, the better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any healthy breakfast cereals that can be like sprouted? Um, so, again, this is kind of like pasta. If you're going to do it, I wouldn't just eat it by itself because it can... Um, it can't spike the sugar, but one of them that I love, and you do just a little bit, now here's what I would do with this. I would have a serving of this, but then I would have an egg and something else on the side, because a big bowl of this is kind of sugar promoting, but it's, um, it's bean based. It's called Love Grown, and it's made with <laughs> navy beans, lentil, it's really, it's actually good. It's good, I promise you it's good. It sounds terrible, doesn't it, but it's good. Um, it has navy beans, lentils, garbanzo beans, um, and brown rice flour, and that's it. Um, pro six grams of protein, so it's it's lower glycemic. But if you had a big bowl of it, it's still it, it wouldn't be good. So a small bowl with an egg on the side or something like that to help balance that out. But yeah, there, there's there's some of them out there. But unfortunately, most breakfast cereals. <laughs> I'd rather see you do the overnight oats and you add a little bit of oats with a bunch of nuts and seeds in it. That's even better. Yeah. Do you, I think that they, they actually recorded it, so I don't know. We could ask the, the they have a YouTube channel for mentor, um, yeah, I guess I just learned this. Yeah, and they're recording it, so you, you could watch it again. You could, you could 
have your dinner and watch me probably next week. <laughs> yeah? How do you make the overnight oats? Okay, so what I did, and I'm new to this, I'm a virgin overnight oat maker here. So it's equal parts oats to unsweetened milk. I do very low amount of oats just because I'm sensitive to that for blood sugar. So I did a quarter cup of oats, just plain raw oats, to a quarter cup, maybe a little bit more of an unsweetened almond milk because I don't do regular milk very well. Um, then you add um, any kind of nut or seed. I added um, chia, a little bit of chia seed. I added some cacao nibs to mine, some coconut flakes to mine, some frozen um, wild blueberries to mine, a little bit of cinnamon in there. And then I stuck it in the fridge, put a container a top on my mason jar put it in the refrigerator um, for overnight, literally, woke up the next morning, spooned it up, added a little bit more milk to it, and then I just popped mine in the microwave for 30 seconds because most people eat them cold. I, I like a warm, you know, and I think I even added some flax seeds and some hemp seeds to that as well. So essentially it was a little bit of the oats and a bunch of really good healthy fat. I made one for my husband this morning, everything the same except I did a half of a mashed banana Little, just a little bit, and a tablespoon of natural peanut butter um, with some hemp seeds in there, and he just loved it. He loved it. Yeah. He, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, there's, there's so many recipes. I mean, you could find a million and one recipes for overnight oats, but you know, you could add whatever to it. And if you, and if you wanted it a little tiny sweeter, that's where your drizzle of honey drizzle would, would be okay. One more question. Any more questions? Well, thank you, everybody. This was great. Uh, we, we went over 25 minutes, but I think this was wonderful. Remember, any Heinen store, you can find a wellness consultant, and they can, they can answer your questions, and this will be on their YouTube station. So thanks, everyone. Thank you.